Sometimes extreme circumstances call for extremely specialised techniques. When I was fishing for Greenland shark, not only was the size of the fish potentially extreme, but also the depth of water that they were living in. We're talking over a quarter of a mile down. Now, in that situation, there's no way that I can use conventional nylon line. You'd need an enormous reel to hold the necessary quantity. And also, with all that line out in the water and the tide running, this is going to be taken in a huge bow. I'm going to need an immense amount of weight just to keep it on the bottom. So I got around that by using equivalent strength braided line, much, much thinner, just cuts through the water. Also, there's no stretch. The only disadvantage with braid is that it has no resistance against abrasion. And the thing about sharks is they have a very abrasive skin and they also have the habit of rolling up the line. So if that happened, well, this is a bit of sandpaper I've got here and battles and fours and it's, it's just gone. So we take care of that by down at the other end of the line, very strong swivel, 30 foot of very thick nylon. Uh, on the other end of that, 30 foot of plastic coated wire couple of big circle hooks baited with lumps of fish. We attach about five or six pounds of metal to that, throw it over the side. And it takes five minutes to reach the bottom. As well as the extreme depth, there was also some extreme weather to contend with. Very, very cold. I had to wear multiple layers of specialised clothing just to keep warm and also keep mentally alert. But the weather was also affecting the boat, causing it to rock, move around quite a lot. Uh, and there were times when it was really quite hard to prevent the lines from tangling. We had three or four down very often at the same time. But the worst thing was that sometimes actually the anchor would drag and we, we would start moving and just have to pull all the lines up. Once the bait's out and nicely presented on the bottom, uh, apart from the small matter of bringing them up every so often just to check the bait is still there, hasn't been eaten by hagfish or sea lice, it's then really a case of just watching the rod tips and trying to spot that odd little movement that doesn't quite fit with the rhythmic bouncing backwards and forwards uh, of the boat movement. As soon as you suspect that it is a fish, it, the first thing is immediately to put on the harness because without wearing that, we're talking potentially very, very big fish and they would definitely have the upper hand. But even wearing that, it was still a good half hour before I saw the fish on the surface. The Greenland shark. It's just too big to bring on board. We'd only injure it trying. I've no choice but to get into the freezing water with the world's largest predatory shark after the great white. This water, even through the dry suit and about five layers of undergarments, is, is cold, it's cold, and this thing lives in it all the time. We're not up here, nearly half a mile down. <laughs> 